I'd like to say good morning to everyone. Good morning. And um, it's uh, truly a pleasure to be here this morning. Um, good to see everyone. Um, I always say, when everything goes wrong, somebody's going to get saved that day. Um, so I believe two people get saved in the morning. That's been one of those mornings that we really have. Um, but I'm excited to be here. I, I, uh, I just, first of all, I want to thank uh, all the uh, other preachers that, that they come and do such a tremendous job. Uh, I know we uh, have a very unique thing going, and we couldn't do it this way on that. <coughs> Every single person that comes up uh, for the choir, the preacher, amen. And so on any given Sunday, uh, we're going to get a good, good deal uh, from somebody. And uh, so that's a, that's a, that is a, that is a blessing. And so I ask a lot of them. Uh, I'm going to try to uh, I'm going to try to get this 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 thoughts these thoughts across to you this morning if I can. Uh, some has been heavy on my mind. And, uh, I have more time to to study now since I have help. So uh, so I'm going to try not to be long. Uh, that, that's my my challenge this morning, so if you will, um, turn to Matthew chapter 5. Um, Matthew chapter 5, verse number 8. I'm going to, I'm going to ask someone just to read that verse out loud out there. Make sure I got the right numbers, I'm not looking at my Bible. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. First, say anything about an heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and so, as we consider our uh, study in the Beatitudes, um, uh, and we are looking at the overall theme of uh, third day living, of course, the ideal is. Uh, Jesus rose from the dead. It was a three-day process. Uh, first, day one, he died. You know? And so if we go through these Beatitudes, you'll find out uh, Beatitude number one, uh, that's an important spirit. Uh, to be happy, you first got to die to yourself. Amen. Then day two, after Jesus died, they mourned, didn't they? They mourned. And, uh, and so Jesus tells us uh, in the Beatitudes that Blessed for they that mourn, but they shall be comforted. Amen. And so he goes on and continues to encourage us uh, with these beatitudes. And so uh, today, in, in, in the continuing third day living, uh, we come to my mother's favorite uh, beatitude. Uh, she would always quote this. This is the one I remember the most. Uh, uh, blessed of the human heart, but they shall see God. So it's very special to me. Uh, the word pure here means, um, uh, uh, go back and look at the original meaning. Can y'all hear me okay? I'm going to try not to holler today. Uh, it, it means to be uh, clear or clean are free from dirt. And it's the idea of when you take your clothes to the, to the laundry, you wash your clothes, and you, um, um, you laundry your clothes and for the purpose of getting uh, all the dirt out so that those clothes will become uh, clean and spotless. So that's what it means to be pure in our heart. It means that, that our hearts have been cleansed, uh, that our hearts have been all the dirt uh, have been removed from my heart. And the wonderful thing about this is every Christian, every born again Christian, has the capacity to have a clean heart. Amen. We say, where should we get this from, Richard? Uh, Revelation 1 5 tells us, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own <coughs> So through the blood of Christ, not, not more than that tide, uh, but through the blood of Christ, he, he washes our sins away. 
Testament. So that tells us that if we are a born again, real Christian, as I talk about this some with my kid, that the blood is there to wash away any impurities in our heart. In our heart. Now, keep, keep that in mind. You got a little bit of ring in the beginning. So, why is this so important? <coughs> get past the heart and stuff. Why is this so important? Because he says, to God the Father, he says, if you don't have a pure heart, who you're not going to see? God. God. Now, he's what it means, right? So that tells me that it's extremely important that we have a pure heart. And so, um, and, and, and so, um, but there are those three things. There are several more things in there, but, but I just want to talk about a few of the time. There are some things that will contaminate our heart. So in order to have a pure heart, have to have our heart washed or decontaminated. And so, we will turn to Matthew chapter 15. I want to flip it around just a little bit. Matthew chapter 15, verse, uh, in the, verse number 2. <coughs> I don't know why I said one of the sounds is your age. Age is this. Uh, so I really want everybody to get this if at all possible. <laughs> So Matthew chapter 15 says, uh, in verse 2, uh, subscribe to the Pharisees. Now, the church folks came at Jesus. And he says, Why do the disciples transgress, transgress the traditions of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. And Jesus answered and said unto them, uh, I'm going to uh, give you my, uh, my translation there. He said, you said what? <laughs> Out of all the things you can ask me <laughs> that you can try to hear me up on, you fix to make a deal because my disciples didn't wash their hands before they ate bread. Translated, you don't judge me and say that I'm not who I say I am because my disciples didn't put their hand sanitizer on when you wanted to put it on. <laughs> All right. Jesus said, You gotta be kidding. So I don't know how Jesus will do things. So a lot of times when they ask him a question, remember this now when you deal with, with the situation, uh, instead of him giving them a direct answer, he gave them a question. He said, why do you also transgress the commandments of God? Because of your tradition. Now you're going to talk about my hand sanitizer and my disciples' hand sanitizer. You, you, you chew on this. And so Jesus went back and forth with them. We're going down, but we can skip on down to verse number 11. Uh, he says, here and understand. Get your mind off the hand sanitizer. It would mean nothing. And listen to this. He says, it's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. He says, so if they get a few uh, uh, germs eating some bread, that means nothing. But what comes out of our mouths means everything. Because in verse 19, he tells us, for out of the heart, and that word heart again, Proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulterers, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemy. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat unwashed hands before uh, before does not defile a man. He said, you, 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 you got this thing all crossed up. You got it all crossed up. The most important thing. Uh, uh, is what comes out of us, what's in our heart. And so we don't really know what's in a person's heart because I can't see your heart and you can't see my heart. But I can sure see what comes out of you and your mouth. Amen? Amen? Yeah, I don't know what you're thinking. You can sit there, you know. It's something in Proverbs that doesn't bother you. It's something in Proverbs that said, uh, 
he would uh, uh, it says he put a fool to consider wise to open his mouth. Hey, hey. Go look it up. It's in Proverbs somewhere. As long as you be quiet, folks don't know anything about you, right? But as soon as we open our mouths, we reveal our heart, right? And so he lists those things that 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 that, that can be in our heart. And so he lists those things that that, will, that contaminates our heart. And so the first thing he started off with, he said evil thoughts. He started off with our mind. Our mind. So the first thing we're gonna have to purify, if we're gonna have a pure heart, we're gonna have to purify our thinking. Because we know if we think wrong, wrong enough, what we're going to do wrong, we're going to act wrong, right? You can keep it in your head if you want to, but sooner or later, you keep all of the evil stuff wrapped around in your head, and sooner or later, it's going to come out. It says, Proverbs uh, 23 and 7, if you have to turn there, it says, As a man thinketh in his heart, that it word is again, so is he. Amen. So you can, you can, you can fake it, you know, doing stuff and acting in a certain way, but sooner or later, the heart is going to reveal itself. Amen? Amen. And that's what Jesus said. It's not what goes into a person that defiles. It's what comes out of us. And what comes out of us is in our heart. So you gotta, you got to change your thinking. you gotta watch, you, you got to watch what you think. Now that's a great deal, a contemporary deal of uh, 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 the 20, 21st century. I don't know if you know this deal, though. You know, I, I like to read my old books. You know, so I don't know if you ever heard of this deal, though. His name is Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Snoop Dogg. And he got some theology. Let me see if you heard this. He says, I got my mind on my money. <laughs> oh, you heard that too, ain't it? And I don't even like that. I got my mind on my money, and my money on my mind. What's in his heart? Money. What's in his heart? It's on his mind. And whatever you think about all the time, Whatever is on your mind all the time, that's what's in your heart. And sooner or later, good or bad, sooner or later, it's going to come out. Amen. So, 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 but God has fixed our mind in such a way that, that, that if you really think about it, you can only think about one thing at a time. One thing at a time. So if you start changing your thinking, then you can change your actions. Amen? Amen. Amen. But that's the second thing he talks about in these verses. Everybody still with me? Amen. I'm trying not to get along. He says, he named the other things that we can do. He talked about murder and, and, and adultery and fornication. All those things we don't like to talk about, right? But those are actions of the will. Those are actions of the will. And so, what is the will? It says the will is that power by, whereby men and women are capable of choosing moral good and refusing what is morally evil. So, the will is when we make a choice either to do good or to do bad. And it says, and, 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 and so the verse tells us that to have a pure heart is when we begin to make right choices. Why? We make those right choices because we choose to make those right choices. Proverbs 14, 14 and 12 says, there are a way that seems right to a man, but the end of that way is death. So, 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 we gotta get our, we gotta get our wheel lined up to what God would have us to do. And it's not about what I think or how I feel, it's about what God says. And you know, we live in a time where everybody's got an opinion, amen? Then you get online and go to, you know, 
Twitter and, and, and Snap and, 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 and Facebook and, every, and, and you post something and everybody got an opinion. Well, how do we know whose opinion is correct? We got to go back to the Word of God. And if the Word of God says it, then we got to start right back and say, that's it. Everybody still with me? I guess I'm about to holler a little bit. Y'all saw it out. You know, a lot has been said in the last few days. There's a lot of stuff I want to talk about. A lot has been said in the last few days about um, Roe versus Wade. You've been hearing about it. Everybody got an opinion. Amen. You know, one thing I've learned, I, I've been studying the Bible all my life, and I thank God for that. I've studied the all my life. And I'm blessed to be able to study God everything. You know. And one of the things I, I find out about studying God's Word is we make it way more complex than it is. You know, the Bible, in most cases, now, I'm, I'm not saying everything in the Bible is simplest. But most things in the Bible is pretty simple. If you, if you just go and read it, amen. If you go to the command, what it say? Thou shalt not kill, right? right? Now you can make that as complicated as you want to make it complicated. But now it boils down to killing Israel. You can stop your opinion right there, amen. 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 But now I'm going to tell you what I have a problem with. I've been talking about this with my friends, so I'm going to talk about this in the church, man. I'll tell you what I really have a problem with. Now, all these folks been going around marginal about abortion, right? You know, it's wrong. We got, we got to close the clinics. We got to do all this kind of stuff. Uh, and, and, and amen. They got it done. But my question is, what are you going to do now when folks start having the babies? Amen. amen. You going to get out there tomorrow so the babies can have some health care? You going to get out there tomorrow so the babies can have some milk? You going to get out there tomorrow so the baby can have some food? You going to get out there tomorrow so the families can have what they need? Or you going to work just as hard to take care of folks? Amen. amen. Then you did when you was talking about don't kill the baby. Because now, I'm just telling you what's in my heart right now. See, this, that, to me that was an easy part. Because you don't have to get your hands dirty. You let some ass go out there and do the talking, and then you just send them a check. Amen. But now, when you got to get out there and help somebody, take care of somebody, amen, that's a whole different thing. And so now you're going to really get to see what's in a person's heart. Right. Boy. So I'm waiting. Yeah, it's wrong. But if you let them die when they get here, amen, right? Like, that's just as wrong, too, amen. amen. It's cold. I got to get back. I'm sorry. <laughs> Amen. Make up three feet. But we gotta take the word of God for what it says. And that's it. That's it. In the story. No folks say period. You guys are spot out. Hey, I said, how do I want to be going on? You go, periods. <laughs> That's what you got stuck doing with the word of God. You know, you know what I'm saying? Forget your opinion. You know, you know, I have some more stuff to say, but I, I need to get to it. So, he says, and, and there's some, whole, there's some, there's some other ways how we things to determine our heart. You come to class on, on, on Wednesday. Talk about those But he makes a promise. He makes a promise. He says, they are blessed. They are blessed because we are blessed. Because we are going to see God. We're going to see God. That's a wonderful thing. Isn't it? But now, This means that we're going to see God. But now I see some folks out there saying, well, you know, preacher, you old. I ain't old. I ain't playing on that no time soon. Amen. So, so I hear you. Yeah, I hear you. But yeah, you know, I'm young. Amen. I got my whole life to live. You really don't know that, but that's how we feel when we're young. Amen. Yeah, I felt like that when I was young. I got my whole life to live. Three days later, I was old. <laughs> Uh, but now, John wanted 
19, you don't have to look it up, but I'm just going to give you. John 1 19 says, no one has seen God at any time. Right. So now, he says, we're going to be blessed when we see God. And he said that God is invisible, so we can't see God. But he tells me I'm going to be happy. So if you're trying to tell me the only time I'm going to be happy is when I get to heaven. I think not. So what does it really mean when he says we're going to be happy or blessed when we see God? What are three kinds of sight? I ain't going to get rid of all of them. That's physical sight. When we say, you know, uh, when I say I saw a little baby in Greece, uh, that means I saw it. Did, did I tell you about it? I tell you about a little increase? Yes, you did. <laughs> I didn't tell you about that increase. You know, uh, the, 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 the two Two seconds about a little increase. You know, I've been trying to get somebody to name a baby after me for help. Who by the name of baby after me? Oh. But I, I've, been, I've been reading these books. Nobody talks about the Sermon on the Mount, and I talked about this early on. Nobody talks about it. There are not very, very many new books written on the Sermon on the Mount. They skipped it. So I've been spending my time lately reading books all the way back to the 1600s uh, to find information about the Sermon on the Mount. It's, 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 it's unreal. And so I ran across this guy that wrote this book I've been reading all week for the last few weeks. And his name is Increase Matters. His first name is Increase. Man, I call that name. Increase. Increase. It rings with that. Increase. So, 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 my daughter got engaged. She's going to get married, and, you know, and she's going to get a whole other set of pants with that. So I thought I'd put my daughter in first. I said, when y'all start having some grand grandbabies, name one of them Increase. <laughs> what y'all laughing about? <laughs> So, so one day I'm looking forward to seeing my baby increase. Right. <laughs> you make that shake of the head. Put your baby in So, so, so there's physical sight. There's mental sight. When I tell somebody, uh, you tell me something, I say, well, yeah, I know. I see what you mean. That means I see it in my mind, right? There's mental sight. But then there's spiritual sight. That's spiritual sight. And so, what he's talking about is we don't have to wait until we get to the heaven just to see God. We can see God now. Yeah. Right. We can see him now. John 5 17, we're going to turn it on real quick. We'll just write it down. He says, Jesus said, My Father is always working, always, and so am I. So, the idea is, if we get our heart right, we get our heart right, and God is always, every day, 24-7, according to that verse, he's always doing something all around us, then we ought to be able to see God every day. Every day. See, we take great pride in, 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 in saying, yeah, I see the devil. The devil is all in there. Oh, yeah, I see what the devil is trying to do to this person. And yeah, I can see the devil acting over there. And we're not always trying to spot the devil, but we're always spending our time trying to spot God. Right. Why? The scripture didn't say that the devil was always at work around us. He said God is always at work around us. Yeah. So when you go to work, on Monday, instead of going out, you're talking about me. Yeah, I don't want to be talking about me. <laughs> and going to work, yeah, I know they are trying to get me. Yeah, and going to work, yeah, yeah, I know they're mad at me. I'm mad at them. Instead of trying to see all that, the scriptures say, you ought to be trying to see God. Yes. Look for that. Well, why would I do that? Because he is there. Oh, yes. He is there. Folks, at your job, at your school, wherever you are, every day, need to see, need to hear about God. There are situations in your life right now, you think it's all going up in your face. It's God is all in there. Okay. Yes. Yes. 
So instead of trying to find the bad in everything, instead of trying to find the negative in everything, look for God. Yeah. Look for God. He is there. He's there. He's there. And if you're a believer, you can see it. God gave us some call. You know, I call my own name. Like, increase. <laughs> the other verse we all know. Um, somebody tell me Hebrews. I don't think y'all talk about it. I'm so used to teaching that, but the preaching. But what does Hebrews 1 say? 11 and 1 about faith. Faith is a substance of things that hope for. And what else? Things that are not seen. And the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. That means if we have the eyes of faith, we can see what everybody else can see. It makes them invisible become visible. So if you, instead of going in there with your attitude and your bad attitude, if you go in there with your faith glasses on, then you can see God working everywhere. Because the Bible said all things work together well for the good those. for those who love God. God and are called by His purpose. Right to His truth. So no matter how bad you think it is, no matter what's going on in your life, if you put your faith glasses on, He's there. He's there. He's trying to tell you about something. Amen. 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 Before I go, I want to talk to you about Moses. Turn with me. Last thing you turn with me. Turn with me to Exodus chapter. As I close. What is Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. Verse 3. Exodus chapter 3. Verse 3. Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. And it's a real familiar story. But I, I want you to, I want you to see something. Exodus chapter 3, verse 2. Let everybody get there. Amen. You know, I'm, you know, I'm enjoying talking to y'all. I want to go around and hug everybody. Yeah. I like the part about people wrong. I love being outside. But, you know, I just want to go out and talk about it. My wife's still out. She's going to ask me to go home. won't let me go to It says, Exodus chapter 3, verse number 2, it says, And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire. Oh, it's just uh, in the midst of a bush. And this angel of the Lord, that was Jesus, way before he got here, when you put that in your pipe and smoke, that was the angel of the Lord, that was Jesus Christ. Before he even got it. Isn't that amazing? So he looked and behold, the bush was burning the fire, and the bush was not consumed. So when the Lord saw that he turned around and looked, verse 4, God called him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Verse 5, then he said, Do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy. Now, you know I got a hurt feeling at one time. You're right, you know I got a hurt feeling at one time. Alright. Uh, everybody's talking about visions and dreams. You can notice that. Everybody having dreams. I ain't said nothing wrong with dreams. I have them too. I'm just going to tell you this because you've got a dream on me as we go. Amen. 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 I, if I eat a big bowl of these little beans before I go to sleep at night, I have a dream. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the whole dream is better. Not a problem. Everybody sees visions. You know, I saw a vision. And, you know, I, I get all kind of calls about that. I don't mind talking to him about it. But uh, Moses saw 
this phenomenon that nobody ever was allowed to talk to your mom And he says, he saw a bush, you know the story, that was burning. But it wasn't burning up, it wasn't being consumed. And then God not only came to him, but he spoke to him. I, I did, you know, I was right. Scared most of the devil. Who scared him to death. And so he was having an encounter with God. He was having an encounter with God. Now, but let me tell you a little bit about this encounter. See, the important thing in this encounter was not the fact that he saw push. That was good. The important thing was that uh, uh, God spoke to him. That was important. But the most important thing was God was about to shake Moses' life upside down. His world, his whole world was, was about to change. Because he saw God. You see, Moses had been in the wilderness for 40 years, and God put him in that wilderness for 40 years to get his heart right. Yeah, he had to get his heart right before he met God. This time is going to be real important. You know, Moses had a little word in his heart. You remember he killed somebody? Yeah, so he, God had to get that out. It took 40 years to get it out. Uh, he had a little a pride because he used to be depressed, right? God put him out on the backside of the devil. He, uh, death, he had to get that out, right? Uh, he was a good looking fellow, so he was probably hung up on his looks a little bit. Uh, God had put him on the backside of the devil for 40 years to get his heart right. And when God got his heart right, he woke up one day, that day was like every other day, and all of a sudden he met God. Yes, yes. He met God. Yeah. But do you notice? He told Moses, who are your shoes on? Who are your shoes on? Now, if Moses had not pulled his shoes on, that conversation would have ended right there. Because see, I'm going to make this name real simple. Hope you never forget it. So you can boil all the light down in two cans. Two cans. She write that down. Two cans. Now I don't know what kind of cans you're gonna pick up when you get home. <laughs> but I'm gonna pour all the light down. Well, I got your attention when I say that. You can pour all the light down. The two cans. When Moses met God. And God spoke to him. And God told him to pull his shoes off. Before that conversation went any further, he had to have a can of act right. Okay. Yeah, a can of act right. Because if he didn't do what God told him to do, that conversation was going to end right there, right? So before he could move a little further, he had to open up a can of act right. And so we talk about these visions and we talk about these dreams, but the most important thing is not the vision, the dream. The most important thing is that can act right. Yeah. Okay. Well, amen. Because when he started to act right, his whole life changed. Yeah. So I don't care what the vision, I don't care what the dream, but what I'm really looking for and what God is looking for is that can act right. Yes. Y'all with me? How many cans are there? That's one can. If I told you to boil all the light down, the two cans, right? Now, next thing, skip down to verse 9. I'm wishing he played play music because of the second. He said, yeah, he said it all. Verse 9. He says, now therefore, behold, the cry of the children has come. And I have also seen the oppression of which the Egyptians oppressed. And I hear you a second king. He 
He said, come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my children, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. See, the purpose of that whole thing was just to whack uh, Moses with the bush. The purpose of that whole inter interchange went for the purpose of, of him being the voice of God. The purpose of that whole thing was for him to, number one, act right. Because that conversation wasn't going to go any further until he act right. And then, there was another king that I want you to open up. We all have to open up when we see God. Then the second can we need to open up is a can of do right. Yeah, we need some do right, amen. This is Friday. Friday. I was sitting in my living room. And, 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 and at my desk, reading in Greece, and all of a sudden I heard some popping going on outside. And I said, okay, it's still shooting out firecrackers uh, from the 4th of July. I thought they got rid of all them things. Well, lo and behold, my neighbor came by and knocked on the door. He said, man, you see what's going on? I said, what? He went out and said, they're shooting out there. And somebody was at, at, at the end of my yard. Two guys. Jump out of this was too baby more than that. Jump out of their car and start shooting at one another. And we went out there and we and with the police and they recovered at least 16 rounds that they had fired out at each other. My neighbor who was sitting on the porch, two of us were in her house. See what we need to turn things around is not more visions in their lives. Not for dreams, amen. Not for coming to church and say, oh, that's how they're going to go back home. But what we need is some act right and some do right. Amen. And if you think about my things in my life, we need that act right. And then do right. Amen. So bless are the pure in heart. Whatever you need to get your heart pure, to get it pure because when you get it pure, you will see God. Yeah. Now, I don't ever want you to forget this. Now, I want this to, I'm not, you know, I've got my cold. So, when you get ready to leave today, I want you to stop by, stop by the door. And get you a can of do right. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and take that back and, and send it on your desk or send it on your table or whatever. 